So natural sweetener, specifically erythritol, is going to kill you. Yes, it's a sugar alcohol extracted from fruits and vegetables and used as a low-cal natural sweetener is now bad. Oh yeah, a new study on natural sweeteners, oh, it just came out. And the headlines look like this. Zero calorie sweetener is linked to heart attack, stroke, study finds. And it was published in CNN Health on February 28th. And the sugar replacement called erythritol is used to add bulk to sweeteners like stevia, monk fruit, or it can be used alone. But it's seen a lot in keto-reduced sugar products. It's been linked to blood clotting now, stroke, heart attack, and death, according to this new study. They explained that the study was revelatory in showing the dangers of this sweetener. In this study, if your blood level of erythritol was in the top 25% compared to the bottom 25%, there was about a two-fold higher risk of heart attack and stroke. And it's causing platelets to clot more, which essentially can break off and cause heart attacks and stroke. Now, a pint of keto ice cream will cause increased clotability in your blood for about two days. Now, up until now, it's been shown to be safe. Erythritol, which is found in stevia and monk fruit, so many of the blends, is now in question. So I'm here reading this CNN article, and naturally, I decide to go read the study in Nature magazine myself. And here are some important points that we need to consider before we take this fully at face value, okay? One, it's not a randomized controlled trial showing that humans using this agent are getting cardiovascular events, detrimental and adverse effects from using it. Now, that'll never be done because of ethics, but the other part of it, it's a small study. With that said, they did do well at removing unhealthy user bias, right? They revalidated, you know, it might have not just been erythritol, it could have just been the user overall. They revalidated it with other findings on other people. Now, they also followed up with a mechanistic study to understand the process. And they were seeing that, yes, when we utilize erythritol in the cell, there's an increased amount of clotability. But we also need to consider the foundational research of erythritol and not get caught up in hyperbole. And I know it's hard and it's less sexy, uh, but we need better design studies to show this. Now, this does actually open my eyes, though. It does show, okay, wait, wait a minute. For some people, erythritol may not be indicated, particularly the people who are hyperinflamed, who have heart issues, history of stroke, even family history, and who are eating crappy. Now, when it comes to the better designed and fundamental research on erythritol, there are different studies. We see on type 2 diabetics, which was a three times larger study, that erythritol at 36 grams per day for four weeks actually strengthened the blood vessels and decreased blood pressure. We also know erythritol has virtually no effect on blood sugar or insulin. And other studies show that erythritol may even be powerful at healing your oral health, much like xylitol works at balancing the flora. Now, multiple studies have been shown testing the toxicity effects and the metabolism of erythritol on animals and humans, and it's been regarded as safe. Look, for me, do I use erythritol? No. Not because I'm worried about getting a heart attack or stroke, because it bloats me. I think erythritol is one of the sugar alcohols that causes the most amount of gastrointestinal distress for people. A lot of bloating, a lot of burping, a lot of passing gas. I don't like erythritol. I stay away from it for that reason. But it doesn't mean that if I had tolerance to erythritol that I'd be scared to use it. And it comes back to that quote that this shouldn't be extrapolated to the general population. And the participants in this intervention already were increased risk for cardiovascular events. But one of the most concerning parts of this study that showed that folks who consume more erythritol are more likely to have a heart attack and die is the way it was designed. I believe what the authors of this study measured was incorrectly utilized in this study. Because when you look at the levels of erythritol that were tested, they weren't dietary levels of erythritol. They were blood levels of erythritol. Now, in the study, if you look at the people who were studied, the subjects, they were sick people. They were very sick. Diabetes, hypertension, heart attack, they were chronic disease sick people. Now, why would you measure blood levels of erythritol and not dietary levels of erythritol and make the connection that erythritol causes heart attacks when the blood levels of erythritol in these sick folks were likely the reason that the body was creating endogenously its own erythritol. So because these people were sick, their body was creating so much erythritol, not because they were consuming so much erythritol and that was making them sick. 
biggest issue with the whole study. So who shouldn't use erythritol based on this study? Probably people who have increased risk for cardiovascular events or family history or eating really poorly. More importantly also is to look at what is causing your blood to be hypercoagulable. What is causing clotting? Because if you're already in an inflamed hypercoagulable state and then you're having erythritol and it's adding more clotting, more issues, higher risk for heart attack and stroke, then we have to think about first two steps before. How do we remove omega-6s? Now, omega-6s are important. They're actually part of our diet and they do have a function in the body. The ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s is totally skewed. Way back when, it used to be one-on-one, when we were much healthier. Now, the omega-3 to omega-6 is more pro-inflammatory, is gonna be about one to 17. So what foods are high in omega-6? And we look no further than seed oils, right? And we talk about this so much, right? They, they skew the balance, the healthy balance of one to one omega-3 to omega-6. And the more we're having seed oils, like cottonseed oil, soybean oil, corn oil, peanut oil, sunflower oil, all of these oils, particularly those which are the highest in omega-6s, is, is gonna increase hypercoagulability and clotability in our system. So then you add erythritol to somebody who's already predisposed in eating in a crappy diet with those oils, now we have a problem. So we need to balance it. So what foods are balancing the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio? Flax seeds, chia seeds, fish, salmon, walnuts, tofu, shellfish, oysters, um, navy beans, Brussels sprouts, avocados. You got to make sure that you're eating omega-3 rich foods just as much as omega-6 oils and processed foods are increasing the inflammation in our body. This, for me, at this point, is more of a concern than erythritol. So there you have it. My take on erythritol, my take on the new study, and my take on the very important things you need to be doing dietarily before we really start worrying about the erythritol. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for rating, reviewing, and subscribing. If you haven't, support the show by doing so. Share it with a loved one and check out our hot, new, fire, sustainable, organic merch at hts.today.